Something going on? <laughs> if they want an issue, it is what it is. It's always been that. Ready for any attack. I cannot wait until he's in uniform to play here. Is there any chance in your mind that maybe enough time has passed that it won't be so bad? It'll be a... <laughs> in Philly. Come on now. I know what's coming. Welcome to NBA Today. I, I just love that look. I'm Malika Andrews. I feel like Steve Harvey saying we've got a good one for you today, folks. Ben Simmons, he is back in Philadelphia. It's been 520 days since he played a game at Wells Fargo Center. And yes, that was the infamous Game 7 against the Hawks in the Eastern Conference semifinals. But tonight, Simmons will take the floor in Philly again in what will certainly be one of the most memorable scenes of the year. And this morning, Ben Simmons spoke to reporters at Shootaround. So excited to play. I'm so excited to play. I can't wait. It's going to be fun. You know, this is going to be an opportunity for me. You know, I've never been in this situation. So, you know, I got to appreciate it and really take it all in. We shared a lot of moments here, um, a lot of ups and downs. You know, this is where I was, you know, I became a man, I feel like. So, um, you know, I've, I've always, you know, had a lot of respect for, uh, for Philly in that way and, and the fan base. You know, it's a special fan base. Um, but I got a lot, a lot of love for Philly. Is it anticlimactic at all for you not to be playing against Joel or, or Tyrese or James or any of those guys? I mean, the fans will make up for it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's let's digest all of that. Richard Jefferson, Janae Agumake, Vince Carter, Zach Lowe joining us. Richard, there, there are so many layers to this return for Ben Simmons in Philadelphia, but on the court, what are your expectations here? Well, hopefully he can continue building off of what he's done the last couple of days. That's what's been so exciting. And we've talked so much. And, yes, there was so much attention on him, the way he finished the one season, didn't play last year. But within those two things, there was a year of basketball miss and a back surgery. People are like, oh, his back is hurting. He had back surgery. Like, you don't go under the knife unless you have to. Every athlete will tell you that. So the fact that it's taken him, you know, a couple of weeks, a couple of months to kind of get into this rhythm, that shouldn't be surprising. He's got to feel the strength. He's got to feel the endurance. And so I'm glad to see him making progressions. And I just I just hope people continue to be patient because I don't know if he'll be as consistent as they would like. Zach, for you, you have been one who has said, I I'm not going to get pulled back in. I'm not going to get sucked back into what the Nets are preaching. And yet, over the last couple of games, we've started to see what the full complement of the Brooklyn Nets could possibly look like. Are you back in? Uh, no, I'm not going to be back in for a while. Okay. But look, to your point, <laughs> This is this is this is the team. Let's see mm -hmm. the team. Ben Simmons has had a great last three games. Kyrie's back. Joe Harris is starting to look like Joe Harris again. Seth Curry's starting to look like Seth Curry again. This is the team. No more nonsense. No more complaining. No more absences. No more anything. If you look at the Nets schedule, their next 15 games, with the exception of a game against Boston, who's obviously a juggernaut, are all against teams that are either their peers, teams mm -hmm. that they probably think they should beat at full strength, or bottom feeders. So come out in the next 20 games. Play without any nonsense, without any absences, and show us over 20 games, not one game, not one week, the next 15 or 20 games, that you are ready to be the team we've heard so much talk about for four years. Now is the time. Everything's in place. Maybe tonight for Ben Simmons becomes a turning point that we look back on. So it all starts tonight. Just to be very clear, Zach, your expectations for Ben Simmons tonight are? To play pretty well. I mean, look, it's going to be a tough environment. I have no idea what that feels like. Mm. I have no idea what he's been dealing with for the last year and a half. I'm not expecting him to come out and score 30 or 25. But just play like he has the last three games. Go to the rim when you should. Right. Get fouled when you should. Spray the passes out when you should. You do that, the rest will take care of itself. Dribble handoff to Kyrie and KD. You do that stuff, everything's fine. So you've hit on it now. Richard's hit on it. What he's been able to do these last three games. Shanae, 
what exactly is that that he can carry into tonight's game specifically? Uh, should I just show you? Yes, because ma'am. one of Please my favorite do. toys right here is the Telestration. Let's oh, and okay. One thing we know about Ben, Ben Simmons is averaging 16 points and nine rebounds over the last three games. Ooh. But that's not the most impressive aspect. I'll tell you more on that in just a second. But let's start with how he really flipped the switch and has gone back to attack mode. Look at this stark difference. Richard, you know numbers from Arizona. What is this? That's 85%. He is shooting 85% from the field over these last three games. 16-9 uh, is cute, but that's the real story right here. Over the, you know, his percentage from the field has been his best so far. And those layups that he was missing, you know, now he's making them. And I'll show you exactly how he's making them because he's flipped the switch. So as we go right here, this was before. This was a month ago, all right? Ben Simmons, first of all, calm down, Richard. Ben <laughs> Simmons, is, he's a slasher. He's going to always look for space, right? Even here, if you see right here, he's, he's ambidextrous. He should be able to use his right hand to attack the rim. You'll even see Steven Adams shade out because he's worried about three seconds. But instead, this is a month ago. He's not even looking at the rim. He's dancing around. And what does that lead to? That leads to a turnover. Uh-oh. All right, let's 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 go back to Sunday because, again, I said he has completely flipped the switch. What I like about this possession right here, as it slowly goes, is that he's flipped it completely with his mindset. If you see him and his vision, he knows he wants to go down, down court, downhill. You'll even see him gesture really quick, like, hey, give me a screen, give me a screen. Nope. Turn on the Jets. Again, Steven Adam again, initiate contact. My favorite saying, and one, son. <laughs> and one, son. All right, what did we see before? This was probably the most controversial play that we saw that was like, Ben, we need you to be aggressive. If you see right here, Ben, he's ahead of the pack. How many of his teammates are behind him? One, two, three, four. This is a fast break. Kai calls for the ball, he pushes it, and he does his job. He draws two. Ben normally should be able to take this dish and go straight to the rim. But instead, as the play progresses, we all saw this because what happened, y'all? He kicked it out. And what was the response that we saw right here? He was like, bro, bro, shoot the layup. Yeah, but he had KD wide open. And I'm guess picking what? that. Guess That's what, what Draymond picks. KD, KD did bail him out. But now let's go to just a few days ago or just yesterday. And you look and you see how he's really changed his game. Here you're going to see a screen and a rescreen. Here's the rescreen, and again, I said, this guy, he should be looking for slashes to the rim. Where's that space? You see that space right here. He's got that foot back. You know, like track. You've got that track <laughs> mode where you push the foot back so that you can attack straight, straight to the rim, and he does just that. And again, I said ambidextrous strong with the right hand. Finishes nice off the glass. You see the juxtaposition between him looking, him being aggressive, and him being passive. This is going to be the confidence piece that really helps Ben Simmons, especially when he's coming back to Philly, because y'all know they're going to make some noise over there. It's going to be a, interesting isn't even the right word. I find myself hopeful rooting for Ben tonight because it's going to be a challenging environment oh, yeah. to play in. And, and Ramona Shelburne has a really great piece on ESPN.com right now that has a quote from Ben Simmons saying, there's only so much you can say unless you've actually been in that situation. But guess what? We've had someone who's been pretty close to in that situation, and that's Vince Carter when he returned to Toronto. So, Vince, what is your take on what this atmosphere will be like and how Ben Simmons could or should handle it? Uh, I tell you this, first and foremost, I'll say I think he'd rather play in the game than actually sitting on the bench because you're an easy target when you're sitting on the bench. You're not moving up and down the court. Yes, you hear it, but when you're engaged in the game, guarding your man, you don't really – you try to block out the noise as opposed to just sitting there. How you block out the noise when you sit on the bench? So I think first and foremost, he, he I think he's excited to play. But you go out there and play your game, and this is easier said than done, and you don't want to try to hit the home run. And he's a different score than mm. what I was you know, as far as, you know, shooting the ball because that first shot, when you step on the floor, <laughs> is the one. That's the worst one. You know, I, I, I remember shooting my first shot, and I was just – my goal was not to hit the flag on the other side of the basket just because of excitement and just – you know, ready to go out there and just show that I can, I, I'm capable and, you know, want to win this game, the booze, the whole nine. I mean, it's just so much, you yeah. know, so much energy in the building. And I tell you, when I walked on the floor just hitting the booze, for me, that did amped me up. So, you know, for him, I think he's going to feel the same way. And he's going, you know, you, you, know, you want to play well to prove them wrong. We were chatting a little bit before the show, Vince, and you said that initially getting those butterflies to settle, it, it didn't just come automatically. Yes, you had a very good game that game. But no. the, the first quarter, what happened? So, you know, getting getting those butterflies out of the way, you know, I, like I said, I wanted to win the game in the first quarter. I tried to make every shot, and I was, it was more laser instead mm. of just shooting the ball. So, 
rough first quarter and 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 I played better in the sec in the second quarter and and, and you know it, it was great to have your team behind you and, and supporting you. But I had a, a little birdie on my shoulder who was a teammate, and he got in my ear and he said, what, Richard Jefferson? Uh, you know, I don't know if we could save that for the ear, ear but it was, I basically said we had your back. We had your back, <laughs> and that's what your teammates need to do in this moment. And when, when the I have your back is not like – uh, it, it, it's more from a space of you go play your game, we'll fill in the blanks. Like we know Vince is a scorer. Ben Simmons is a different player, like, like, like Vince said. So he's going to mm -hmm. create for other people. That's where his teammates have to have his back. For me personally,